So we talked about problems on the left side of the Democratic Party. Let's talk about problems on the right side of the Republican Party, um, particularly the, the so-called Christian right uh, and the influence that they have on the party, whether there is a so-called deal with the devil where uh, for their support for Israel, they're looking for support from the Jewish community for um, right-wing social uh, issues, abortion, etc. Beyond that, the impact that uh, a Gary Bauer has when he says in an event uh, that uh, Israel uh, should not give up one inch of territory, not one inch of territory. Pat Robertson saying that uh, Ariel Sharon was stricken uh, for his stroke for um, for uh, for evacuating from uh, from Gaza. Um, what impact does that have on Republican public policy as it relates to Israel specifically? I appreciate some of the framing in that question because, of course, uh, its its effect on the public policy framing is is quite limited. And to, and to go back to an earlier question, uh, I, th I think you you were right to suggest that uh, there is no quid pro quo on social policies that the Jewish community is asked to adopt. Christian supporters of Israel uh, come come to be allies, and they don't ask anything in return. The Jewish community has availed itself of their uh, allyship. Uh, without any apparent pressure that I see to give up the historic positions on social issues that many of the organizations take. Um, I, think, I think that, that it's, it's perfectly legitimate to call out uh, outlandish statements by Pat Robertson, whether they pertain to Israel's prime minister or whether they pertain to an American city. Uh, when, he, when he starts uh, speculating about divine retribution, uh, it's deplorable and it's, 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 it's worse. It's unfortunate, and he should shut up. But um, I, I think that, that he is beside the point when it comes to uh, social policies that, that most Christians uh, come to the public arena to work with us on, and those are positions we agree with. Now, you can, you can point to the other set of statements where you say, well, the Christian right is rejectionist. The Christian right uh, doesn't support the uh, full agenda of peace processing that, that some of us still have hope in. Well, that's fine, but they're allowed to have... Uh, a differing way of supporting Israel. They're in the tent. The question is, uh, are we going to demonize them? They were demonized here on Sunday. That was wrong. These are people who want to work with us, ask nothing in return in, a, in terms of changing our agendas, and uh, the, the way Howard Dean, a man who has to live down having said it's not our place to take sides in the Middle East, can come here and wave that stick to demonize our, our Christian neighbors, I think is a real uh, problem in maturity if that actually affects our voting behavior. Ira, I, uh, um, some, some red meat there for you to respond yeah. to? Yeah. Um, if it doesn't have an impact on public policy, how can come people like Ann Coulter can get away with saying that Judaism should be thrown away? If it doesn't have an impact on public policy, how can John McCain, a man who knows much better, say that the Constitution is a Christian document? Not public policy. How, if it doesn't make the uh, public policy, how can Mike Huckabee say we should be teaching creationism in the schools? If it doesn't have an impact on public policy, how can John McCain say we should be taking, teaching creationism in the school? If it doesn't have an impact on public policy or politics, how come some leading evangelicals have said, if you don't stop criticizing us, we're going to back off on our support for Israel? And going to the Israel issue, I have made the argument that Democrats and Republicans are essentially the same. And I think it's the, most, it's the right argument, it's the truth, and for us, we should keep that argument. But there are a few bad apples in both parties. And Noah, if I'd, a I'd ask you a couple questions. I hope if, I the get Democrat the if the Democratic Party, if the Republican um, Party is so good on, on Israel, how come on the most important vote of the year this past year, the Republican Party leadership whipped against the foreign aid bill? The first time anyone can remember a party leadership whipping against the bill, and 164 out of 198 Republicans voted against aid to Israel, $26 million of aid cut directly from Israel. Does that make the, the Republican Party anti-Israel? No, it doesn't, but there's, some, there's a problem. If the Republican Party is so pro-Israel, how come uh, uh, Bush and Rice last year opposed the most important pro-Israel legislation, the Palestinian Anti-Terrorism Act and the Iran Freedom Support Act against bipartisan majorities in both houses? Does that make the Republican Party anti-Israel? No, it doesn't, but it is something that they did wrong. If the Republican Party is so is pro-Israel, or so, and, and, and so much better than, than the Democrats. How come when we had the resolution in the Senate last year to condemn, uh, to have the EU cut off ties with Hezbollah, of the 12 senators who voted no, 
10, uh, uh, 10, or 12 others who didn't vote for it, 10 of them were Republicans, one was Bobby Byrd, who is no friend, and the other Democrat was out of town on a, because of a, a death in the family. I can go on and on with the laundry list, and you've heard it, Noah. It is not helpful for us to say, oh, the bad Democrats or the bad Republicans on Israel. Israel is a bipartisan issue. We ought to celebrate that. We ought to push that. It's one of the few left in American politics to use it as a wedge issue helps none of us.